a video on a coupling procedures uh, there will be updated one maybe you've seen the old one but this one uh, it's a little bit more orientated towards uh, what we do here at the MATC versus for the permit class so uh, guys we're gonna couple the unit 3741 into this trailer 3761 seems like the good fit right always check your paperwork always check your numbers that you coupling the correct equipment uh, safety sets the standard. Things can go wrong during the coupling, so please follow all the procedures, all the steps that I'm gonna outline over here for you guys. So before I couple this tractor to the trailer, I did pre-trip this trailer. I did pre-trip the trailer, that tractor obviously, and this trailer, so they uh, good standing, they're good to go. I'm gonna just concentrate only on the coupling parts over here, guys. So first, I'm gonna inspect my fifth wall area before coupling. I wanna make sure that my fifth wheel is properly mounted to the frame of the tractor. All these mounting bolts should be properly mounted, not damaged, loose, broken, or missing. Same here, should be properly mounted, not damaged, and holding my fifth wheel in a good condition. I will check the same thing on the other side when we go over there. If you do have a sliding fifth wheel, like this is the sliding fifth wheel like this tractor has, make sure that your locking pins are out and the fifth wheel remains in a locked position safety release handle should be in an automatic lock position which means it is slided out like this fifth wheel should be properly mounted to its right over here this but this portion the portion is called platform should be properly mounted to the platform top portion of the fifth wheel should also be free of any damage should be properly mounted this is main pin holding it in a place and a little retaining pin that holds it in here fifth wheel should be greased this one is a little bit too dry the structure has been sitting for a while but uh, it should be a little bit more than this every time you see a rust we call it dry fifth wheel so i would rather have this one a little bit uh, better grease fifth wheel should be tilted towards the rear of the tractor so we can pick up this trailer slightly. It will be slightly raised up when we pick it up. If you look from the back into your fifth wheel, there's a locking jaws over there that's gonna grab against the kingpin. Right, see, the locking jaws are open. All you see over here is a trigger that when we get through this trigger, it's gonna close the locking jaws automatically around the shank of the kingpin. Also on the other side, I'm gonna take a look at my mounting bolts, my sliding fifth wheel pins, platform is in a good condition, good shape, top portion or skid plate of the fifth wheel is in a good shape. I do have my main pin over here and I do have my retaining pin holding it in place. Okay, let's take a look at the trailer. So come on over here with me. My Martin is my assistant today, he's gonna help me. Make sure the trailer is in a good condition. We will check on the bottom of here, make sure the trailer apron, it's called a trailer apron, is in a good condition, no damage, no cracks, no dents to it. And make sure that your trailer kink pin is properly mounted, no damage, it's in a good condition. This is, this groove over here guys, this is called shank of the kink pin. No, this is head, this is base, this is shank. This is when the locking jaw is gonna grab it, okay? Make sure, make sure that your trailer is immobilized, not gonna move. It's a new equipment, they do have a spring brakes. We don't have to worry about it. The spring brakes are set because there's no tractor coupled to it. So they automatically is set. But if you got all the trailer, you have to be careful because if the trailer doesn't have a spring brakes, you have to immobilize some other way. Use the wheel chucks or in the, old, in the case of the older trailer, you may have to supply the air first and then set the brakes on the trailer using the air before you come, otherwise you will push it into the side. All right? Guys, uh, nowadays, 100% of uh, piece of equipment I've ever worked with all have a spring brake, so you don't have to worry about anything. Now, if you come into the trailer that's got a cargo loaded to it, you should also go on the back and open a trailer door to check the cargo, how it's loaded, so it doesn't move, so it doesn't fall when you cop into this trailer. So 
once you once you uh, once you inspect all these things, right now I'm gonna bring the tractor in a straight line, not in angle, always in a straight line towards the trailer, close to the edge of the trailer here, so I will compare the height of the fifth wheel. your tractor close to your trailer remember very important thing tractor should be aligned in a straight line with the trailer never back up underneath the trailer in angle because you may damage the landing gear now when I stay so close to the trailer I will compare the height the height of the trailer the best way to define the height when is the trailer at the right height is the trailer is at the right height that when the tractor will be backed in underneath it the trailer will be slightly raised up in here we're gonna use the landing gear to correct the height when i look at my trail over here especially from angle from a side over here it seems like it is too high it seems like the edge of my trailer goes higher than the middle of a fifth wheel and you want this edge of the trail to be lower than the middle of a fifth wheel somewhere about here so I will use landing gear. Stay away from the crank because it may hit you if you stay too close. And I will lower it down. You will see over there how nice it really goes down. Let me check and take a look. You see right now is much better because right now you see that the edge of the trailer apron is below the middle of a fifth wheel. So trailer will be slightly raised when I backed up on it. So that looks pretty good to me. If you're not sure if you nicely align, you can go underneath the trailer and take a look if you're in a straight line. But I know that I have about three inches over here on the side. I know that I am right where I want to be so I don't have to do that stuff. When it looks good for you, what we're gonna do right now, I will back up underneath the trailer and automatically it's gonna couple, okay? When I back it up underneath, when it's coupled, when I hear that click, that sound, I will perform a tack test, which means I will put my tractor in the first gear and try to go forward. And trailer should hold me still, which means I'm properly coupled. Now, you may see in some publications to lower, somebody may tell you lower the airbags never lower airbags from a suspension when you're coupling. This is number one cause of something called high hook or jumping the fifth wheel when the people dump in airbags during the coupling procedure. We don't, we don't, first of all, it's dangerous. Second of all, it can actually damage airbags. There's a device inside of the airbags that keeps them aligned. If you dump the airbags and trying to back up underneath the trailer, you may damage them. So all I have to do right now is just back it up and it will automatically couple. me coupling to this trailer and performing tack test if you've done it correctly look at this landing gear is already up in the air that's why i was able to do that safely tack test without damaging the landing gear sometimes if you got a very heavy load it might be a good idea before performing tack test lifting landing gear a little bit up in the air so you don't damage them so it seems like i am coupled but am, am i I have to check on the things right now to see if I'm really coupled. So first I'm gonna start on the side over here. I check the apron of the trailer if nothing got damaged 
no crack showed i didn't hit it too hard my top portion of the fifth wheel which is skid plate is properly mounted still nothing damaged there after coupling release arm is in the in position all the way in you may see sometimes people grabbing it to see if it's in it is wrong don't grab it if it's in it is couple if you grab it you may accidentally unlock the fifth wheel and it's gonna make a bad day for you my main pin and retaining pin stays here my platform is still in a good condition i see my locking pins for the sliding fifth wheel nothing change over here and all these mounting bolts seems they are in a good condition nothing change over here now we're gonna go underneath the trailer come on martin you're going with me watch your head buddy you have to go underneath the trailer because you have to see that your locking jaws are close around the shank of the kingpin you see right over here that uh, these are the locking jaws that's how it looks like look like the steer bar going across and i forgot to mention but i'm looking at it all the time there is no gap there is no air between the trailer apron and the fifth wheel you see how nicely flat it sits that tells you that coupling it does right it, it, it's done right let's go on the other side over here that's how i emerge on the other side watch your head martin you want to check the saving on this side apron of the trailer looks good and the top portion of this of the fifth wheel looks good there is no room there is no gap between apron and the fifth wheel my main pin and the retaining pin hold over here steady all my mounting bolts are okay holding my fifth wheel and i got my locking pins for the sliding fifth wheel in a good condition looks like i'm coupled correctly so i'm gonna go around and finish coupling First, I'm gonna connect my airlines and electrical lines. I want to check those rubber grommets, check those seals that should be in a good condition, no damage, no cracks, and check these seals on a trailer side. I'm gonna take a look at my electrical cord. It's in a good condition, no damage, and check the socket over here. There's no damage over it, they're in a good condition. So I'm gonna connect them. I got a shorter hose over here. And I'll start from my right to the left in that case. It will be easier for me. I'm gonna align those grommets 90 degrees and turn it down. I'm gonna fasten my electrical socket. You see that little catch over here? That prevents it from sliding out. That's properly coupled electrical cord. I will take my service line. Again, align it 90% red to red blue to blue turn it 90 degrees i will check my hoses over here that are in the proper condition got enough slack that they when i turn the truck they're not gonna get snapped or hit something and they're gonna be rubbing against the catwalk make sure they are this one looks a little bit handicapped over here maybe we'll have to correct this one a little bit you guys get an idea right make sure that the hoses are in a good connection over here. While I'm here, I'm gonna take my time and take a look at the connection to the tractor. They should be properly connected, no damage. When well, we're gonna be checking them later on, guys, we have to make sure that we got no leaks, no flat spots, no bulging, no kinks in our hoses, that the airflow flows correctly into the trailer. The next thing what I'm gonna do is, probably, that was, Thing that I should check before even coupling. Make sure I got enough space over here so the tractor can turn. I wanna make sure I got enough space over here so the trailer does not hit my tires. Uh, especially make sure you got enough room over here that you can turn. If you don't have enough room over here, maybe you have readjust. You can readjust the fifth wheel, position of the fifth wheel to make enough room over here for turning. If you satisfy with all those things, the last thing to do is learn, rate in the landing gear. Now hold it by this little bolt here, make my crank work, and let it go all the way up. I'm watching both legs, I wanna make sure the both of them go up.
How how do we go? All the way up. I'm gonna start the crank in the funnel and that completes coupling. 